Hello, others, and welcome to another week of your social emotional learning lesson. I'm Mrs. Leon, your school counselor. For the past several weeks, we've been learning a lot about emotions and how to calm down. We know that the first thing to calm down is to kind of to stop and take a moment to become aware and name your feeling, right? Try to figure out what's that thing that you're feeling in that moment. And then use some of the calming down strategies, whether it's breathing, counting, or using positive self-talk. Today, we're gonna learn about solving problems. When we solve problems, it is helpful to use some, to have some steps to follow. So these are the steps that we're gonna learn on how to solve problems. If you notice, each one of the letters that spell step means something. So that it's an easy way for you to remember. The S is the first step and it's about saying the problem. The T is to think of solutions. The E, explore consequences. And the P, to pick the best solution. So remembering the word step will help you remember each one of these steps to solve the problems. Today, we're gonna practice the first step, the S, to say the problem. And it's not just to say the problem, it's say the problem without blaming anyone. So I'm gonna show you a video. And in this video, Emma and James are having a problem. I want you to watch and listen carefully for a way for them to say the problem without blame. So let's watch the video and we will keep talking about it. It's my turn. Can't you just wait a few more minutes? I'm trying to finish my project. It won't take very long if you stop bugging me. No way, it's my turn. Come on, you can finish later. I'm busy later. Besides, you're not even gonna work on anything important. The game is important to me. See, you're just wasting the time that I could be finishing this report. You're wasting my time that I could be playing the game. Come on, it's my turn. Just let me finish. You're always hogging the computer. You're always getting on my nerves. Hey, hey, what's going on here? He's not letting me finish my report. She's hogging the computer. It's my turn. Could use a different computer. All the other ones are being used. Okay, I think you both need to calm down so that you can try to solve this problem. All right, that's better. Now... What's really the problem here? And remember, let's say it in a way that doesn't blame the other person. So if you pay attention to the video, you notice that Emma and James were having trouble solving the problem. And it was turning into a big issue. So what was the first thing that they did when the teachers started talking with them? they start calming down. They took some deep breaths so they could be more calm and to think more clearly about what could be a possible solution, right? So to problem solve, we begin with the S, say the problem. And we try to state the problem without blaming anyone. What that means, what means blaming? It's when you say that it's, their fault, someone else's fault. You don't take responsibility about what is your part in the situation. So it's statements that begin with something like, you made me, or because of you, or include words like you are always or you never, those are blaming statements. So when you're having to state a problem that you're having with someone else, uh, without blame, avoid putting any of the other person in your statement. So don't say it, you, he, she, they, 
always try to avoid that and refer to the problem about yourself, how you are part of this problem. What do you need, right? So because when you use blaming, uh, it's not respectful. For example, when Emma said, you're always getting on my nerves or you are wasting my time, it was putting the blame on James. She wasn't taking any responsibility in what was going on. Or when James said, you're always hugging the computer or you're wasting my time. He was putting all the blame on Emma, not assuming any part of his own behavior on the situation. So when we state the problem, let's try to state the problem from Emma's point of view without blaming, without using James in the situation. So maybe Emma could say something like, uh, my turn is up but I want to keep using the computer so I can finish my report, right? So that's a statement that is saying about what it's happening and what it's her part in this problem. Now let's think about the same problem, but from James' side of view. He could say something like, now it's my turn and I want to use it to play again, game. So we have these two different sides of the situation and that can help us to see the problem more clearly without blaming anyone. So a statement without blame will be something like, Emma wants to keep working on the computer to finish her work and James wants to start his turn. That will be like a statement uh, without blaming. And it helps to describe the problem in a way that it's not anyone's fault. Blaming makes people angry. And when you're angry, it's really hard to solve problems and think clearly to think of possible solutions. So today we learn about the first step of solving problems, the F, to say the problem without blaming. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about how Emma and James think of solution and use the other steps of the problem solving steps. And what I want you to do now is to go to the uh, add response button and complete the activity for this week. And I will see you again next week, others. Bye.